Peace be with you. This is Ben Thompson with the Free Citizens of America. And today I'd like to talk about something I have been thinking about. I mentioned this briefly before, but now I want to make an official video on it. And that is that there are seven labors of man. Now when I say that, that means there are seven acceptable uh, working fields that the Lord wants us to to do. And I have developed this from the Torah. Now I'm, I don't plan on, on uh, reading too much today. I just want to talk about this in Genesis chapter 3, it says, in uh, verse 17, and Adam, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, in which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So this is the first labor that God has given to man. Now, why, why would I say seven? Uh, the number seven symbolically represents completion or perfection. And so when if we are to become a complete man with mastery over everything, we need to master these seven uh, labors. Now, uh, you may have heard this, uh, the number seven before in talking about something like this, and that is because there's another section. These are the physical aspects. Our labors are physical aspects. There's also also thinking aspects and we call those the seven liberal arts or the seven sciences and they are if I can remember it correctly grammar rhetoric logic um, geometry arithmetic music and as astronomy with these seven sciences, a man is considered fully enlightened, or on the, be, be able to be fully enlightened. And so just like that, these seven labors are what fully help us fully to become actualized men. Now, the first one we talked about is talking about um, making bread from the sweat of our own la labors and that is true that is talking about agriculture agriculture is the foundation of all labor or at least that's the way it's supposed to be when we are following the path of God everyone or at least most of us are supposed to be farmers and when we talk about agriculture we are talking specifically putting, breaking up the ground, putting seed in the ground, and growing it to produce more seed. That is agriculture. By taking away our ability to be agri uh, agriculture people, they have made us slaves to people who want to give us food, which are the international banking cartel which owns the big multinational corporations. These seven labors are supposed to make us free, just like the seven liberal arts make our mind free. These seven labors make us temporally free, physically free. And the first is agriculture. Second one, I can find it 
It says here in Genesis chapter 4, verse 17, it says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. So, this part is talking about, uh, originally I thought it was talking about architecture, but now I believe that it's talking about a city um, organizational structure, such as a system of judges. Uh, the Lord himself, and later on in the Torah, uh, through Moses and through Jethro, established a system of judges in Israel. And they received some, some pay for their work, whether it be food or gold. Now, it usually wasn't their whole position because, again, they did do agriculture. So the judges, in addition to doing some agriculture, would act in positions of judgment, setting up a city judges to keep order in the city. And so we need a system of judges and the Lord helps us to establish one that is based on freedom wherein we all get to have representational voice. And that's why the most power is supposed to be held locally and the city is the is the what is the lower posts of power, whereas you have the big big government, which is at the top, and then which is over the the whole place. The city covers a small area, but most of the rules and regulations are supposed to be done at the city level. Now, Moses divided up even uh, smaller. It's like you have groups of 10 families and then groups of 50 families and then groups of 100 families and then groups of 1,000 families. And all those had judges placed over them. And they made rules and established order. And so we know that is an acceptable position in the plan of the Lord. The next one comes from Genesis chapter 4. Again, it says in verse 20, And Adad bare Jabal, he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And so the third uh, labor is animal husbandry. Now compare our modern practices with ancient practices and you will find that our way is entirely corrupted. Now a person's whole life was their animals if they were into animal husbandry. And we separate this from agriculture which is putting seeds in the ground and growing food. Animal husbandry is the art of raising animals up. And it involved, and not just for me, the animals have so many other purposes. As there's, there's labors they perform, their, clo their, their hair and skin is useful, their bones are even useful. And of course, there's their flesh, which we are allowed to eat. Now, in today's society, they mass slaughter animals. There's no animal husbandry involved. I've seen it with my own eyes. They herd these animals in uh, these feedlots and they are packed together so tightly that they can barely move and they're li living in their own filth and excrement. And they feed them filth. And some of these animals are in torment their whole life. And then they get herded onto a truck. Now some of them, because of the closeness 
and their lack of movement are unable to really walk. And so in that, t in that point they, they um, either drag them or use a forklift and often the animal gets hurt in that process. Then they get herded off to these huge mechanical structures where they are put on a conveyor belt and slaughtered and processed through machinery with humans uh, working the controls. Now that is not animal husbandry, that is just mass slaughter and torment. And the art of animal husbandry is knowing how to love and care for your animals and to use them appropriately. And then if you want to or need to slaughter and eat them, because you have worked so hard in taking care of them, then you are in the right to do so. Whereas in our modern system, it is all cold and mechanical and people take no thought for the animal and the buyer just buys slabs of pre-packaged goods. And that is in opposition to the plan that the Lord has. That is not animal husbandry. That is its opposite. All of these, all of these labors have demonic opposites. And it is usually in the form of mass production. We have in agriculture, its opposite is chemically created food made in laboratories, genetically modified food, chemicals, things that are destructive to the human body and what harms the body harms the soul. We set up corrupt governments, socialized governments, governments based on conspiracy and not for the people. And that is in opposition to the Lord's plan. The opposite of animal husbandry is feedlot production or the meat industry as we call it. Now, the fourth labor is in the next verse, in chapter 4, verse 21, it says, And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all such as handle the harp and the organ. And so we have... Um, basically musicians, people who uh, make their musical instruments and play them and master them. And I believe this involves also uh, theater and plays and stuff like that. All that entertainment stuff can be positive and is positive. The Lord loves music. We can rest and have joy in theater, but the devil takes that and flips it around to where our uh, musical instruments and music industry are now aimed at corrupting the human soul. Instead of uplifting us, it's seeking to drag us down. Instead of, of a positive theatrical experiences. Most theatrical experiences are negative, pushing false ideology. The that was four. The fifth See, see if I know this right. Agriculture and city government, animal husbandry, mus musicians, and then brings us to number five, which is 
in the next verse, verse 22 of chapter 4, and it says, And Zilla, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And so that is talking about metallurgy, the, the, the process of taking minerals out of the earth and forging it into a uh, into something useful. The Lord himself is called the master refiner and he refines us. Like we refine metal, the Lord refines us. So how important could it be to learn to uh, study metallurgy to refine the art of refining? Now we can create very many positive things using metallurgy. But of course, flipping it around, the devil takes our metallurgy and uses it to create weapons of war and destruction and tools of oppression. And the Lord wants us to protect ourselves by having a few of those things, but we have to not rely on them. But though the way that the devil brings it up, it is about relying on those weapons. And so we spend billions of dollars on our military when we would be better off spending less money and building a pattern based off the Torah to help us to have true peace in our society. Now, the sixth one, the sixth labor is carpentry. Or, as a greater whole, I would call this arch architecture, the art of construction which includes carpentry and stone masonry and the planning out of these buildings. The Lord taught Noah to be a carpenter by showing him how to build the ship and using um, the principles of metallurgy no doubt created nails for the, for the ship although they could have used wooden pegs but it, it doesn't really matter. The point is that the Lord taught carpentry. The Lord also gave us stone masonry. Now, of course, these um, the, well, the, the the first idea of stone masonry actually comes from the that I can find anyway comes from the, the Tower of Babel, which was negative. But the tower itself was not negative. It was the purpose they were building it that was negative. And it was that they wanted to, to build a tower to heaven. Of course, there's traditions, some of which I find really funny and interesting. But the, the point is they were using the, the, their knowledge that the Lord has given them to try to defeat the Lord to overcome any possible flood in the future, even though the Lord said he would never do that again. But they thought they were smarter than the Lord. But the art of stone masonry itself is not negative. The Lord cons uh, had Solomon build his temple, which was made out of stones. So architecture, carpentry, stone masonry, that is an acceptable field to the Lord. And, and it is done with thought and with the hands. Now compare what the world does today with these things. A lot of designs are what we call cookie cutter. Everything looks the same. There's no thought. There's no art in it. And taking that away from that, it is, it is a useless art. It's just mass production. And now, the final 
labor that we have as servants. Now in Hebrew, the, the word for servant and slave is generally the same. There are different words like there's maid servant and, and man servant, but the word for just servant in general also means slavery. Now, as I talked about before, whatever the world thinks is right is not necessarily right. And servant slash slave is an acceptable uh, position in the Lord's order. Now, just to get this out of the way, because I know you're standing wrong, nobody wants to be a slave. I was like, well, actually, some people do. And in the Torah, the Lord says that we are to be servants for seven years and then given a choice. One for freedom and one to remain a slave or servant. Now, this is because the Lord is, is smart and he, he knows, he wants to give people what they want. So a person who wants to be free can go off after seven years and be free. A person who wants to remain a slave can remain a slave. Now, on the other half of this, this there was there's never an excuse for cruelty. The, the Lord never anywhere instructs people to be beaten just because they're a master. The, the harsh treatment of slaves is evil before the Lord. But we know that it is acceptable to have servants and slaves because Abraham himself had servants. And in the Hebrew, there's no difference between the word servant and slave. And they were considered part of Abraham's house. And they worked for him. That is not too uncommon from what we are doing now in our society, but we do it for money, whereas servants as slaves, they labor for the things that they need. We labor for the things that we need. If you are making an, only enough money to survive month to month, then you are no better off than a slave, doesn't matter what your position is or how well you were treated, you are a slave. And because we do not follow the Torah, you are not given the option to become free after seven years. Some people, they can't handle freedom. And so that's, so the Lord allows them to be servants and slaves. Because that's just the, the way they want to be. If when they make it to seven years and they, they want to stay right where they are, that's fine. Now, in addition to being um, a servant slash slave, who is the greatest servant slash slave for the people? That is Jesus Christ. He came to be a servant, and using the Hebrew thought, that means slave. He came to submit himself to the will of the Father on all our behalfs to serve us. Now, if the Lord of all who created heaven and earth, who, st who established the mountains and the seas, and who peopled the planet with animals and his own children, if the Lord himself is a servant and slave how much better off will we be if we learn to be servants and slaves of one another? So those are the seven labors that are acceptable to God. Agriculture. Its opposite is artificial production of food through chemical means. City governance. Whereas the Lord established a free system of judges, it's opposite. It's a tyrannical uh, power system. 
acceptable to the Lord is animal husbandry. Its opposite is mass slaughter of our meat industry. The Lord established musicians and theater and taught us to be uplifted because of it. Its opposite is the negative soul-destroying muses, music and theater entertainment that is causing our souls to go astray. Five, metallurgy. Its opposite is harsh and cruel instruments. Six is architecture, carpentry, stonemasonry, the building arts. Its opposite is thoughtless, pre-manufactured, cookie cutter designing and building. And finally, service. Now, if we look at the Lord, he had all seven of these. He knew how he he he, uh, he had experience. Uh, of course, there's not a, a full account of the Lord's life, but the Lord Himself planted this planet. He was into agriculture. The Lord is the judge. He knows perfect governance. The Lord is a master of animal husbandry. He cared for and raised all the animals on the planet. He taught us how to do it, if we will follow him. The Lord was a master of, mu of music. He created the harmony of the noises and the singing of the birds. He established our, our voices for singing. He established the harmonics in our in our structure everywhere. Everything is from the Lord. He is a master of metallurgy. He is a refiner. And he refines, he uses that knowledge to refine us. The Lord himself is a master builder. He designed his own temple. But more than that, he built up this earth out of stone. He was a carpenter in his mortal life. And he built and constructed things with his hands. And then finally, the Lord is the servant of all. If we are to follow in the path of the Lord and to build the society that the Lord wants us to have, we must learn the seven arts. Now, it, is, it may be impossible to learn all seven of these at once but we can pick and, and choose among it and to be familiar with it. And remembering first and foremost, agriculture is most important. And I would say learning service is also really important, which is probably why it's the last one. For the Lord is the first and the last, the greatest and the least. I leave that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.